Hey, Starship fans, my name is Zach Golden, and welcome to another CSI Starbase Deep Dive Investigation. CSI Starbase. She, this place is way nicer on the inside than I thought it would be. I could probably get used to this real quick. Maybe I might be able to talk Elon into letting me take this over as CSI Starbase headquarters once they move over to the wide bay. I'm not gonna get my hopes up though. Anyways, I wanted to choose this intimate setting to talk to you guys about something that is very near and dear to my heart. And that is stage zero. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you know that I am so obsessed with stage zero that I probably should actually change my name to stage zero Zach. Okay, fine, I won't do it. That was my mother, she didn't like it. Listen, I just want you guys to understand how much it hurts me that SpaceX pretty much treats its new launch tower at the Pad 39A complex like it doesn't exist. Tell you the truth, I think a lot of people watch Falcon 9 launches these days just so they can get a peek of the new launch tower, but you know, good luck, SpaceX is always hiding it. We're pretty much left with aerial shots that are taken from a very long distance away and really hard to get any grasp on what we're seeing. Luckily, every now and then, we do get some up close images from the ground, just like this one posted by Michael Paul on Twitter earlier today. I'm not gonna lie guys, I was really expecting there to be a lot more progress by now, but there are a lot of interesting things in this image, so I think we're gonna have to dive into it to figure out what exactly is going on here. What is taking SpaceX so long to finish the base of this launch tower? These images, taken on March 3rd by Fariel, were some of the first signs we had of OLIT number two rising out of the ground at SpaceX's Pad 39A facility. One major difference between aerial coverage of the South Texas launch site versus the Florida facilities is that pilots flying around the Kennedy Space Center complex aren't really able to get that close to the pad due to the proximity of the nearby military facilities. On the other hand, at Starbase, they can basically fly directly over or through it apparently with the right permissions. With that being said, we have to rely pretty heavily on our ability to zoom and enhance these images in order to pick out the details. I feel like most of you have probably already seen these images of the rebar sticking out of the ground for the foundation of the base of the tower, so I will spare you the details for now because there is another reason I'm showing you this. Did you know that the construction of the second launch tower in Florida began almost exactly one year after the start of the construction on the first tower in Texas? That's gonna make these timeline comparisons significantly easier as we go. In this picture taken on March 11th of last year by RGV Aerial, you can see the rebar sticking out of the ground in a U-shaped pattern. Each of these circular groups of rebar are actually massive columns drilled about 20 meters or 60 feet into the ground. Once the holes were drilled, these massive rebar cages shown here were lowered in and then encased in concrete. You will often hear these referred to as caissons or pilings. As you may already know, the purpose for these is to keep the massive 480 foot tall structure anchored solidly in the ground. I just want to point out that at this time, there were six additional caissons that were yet to be uncovered by the excavators working nearby. Had RGV performed this flyover a few hours later, we would likely see all 25 columns sticking out of the ground. Moving a few weeks ahead, we can compare both structures on April 20th of 2021 and now the new tower on April 20th of 2022. Honestly, it's starting to look to me like SpaceX may be falling a little bit behind on their construction timeline. If this were a race, OLIT number one would have already had both levels of concrete poured by now, but I think we may need to take a closer look before we start to sound the alarm here. Whoa, hold on. Hey, Jeff. Yeah, was it? Hit the pause button real quick. I just noticed something. Sure. Now, I know this may seem a little bit random, but this is actually how it goes down pretty much every day at CSI Starbase headquarters. Our investigations are constantly interrupted by new activities that also require our attention, so sometimes we have to break away to cover them. This is one of those times. So before I jump in too deep, I wanna give you guys an update about the Mega Bay progress, which I spoke about on my last episode. 
Looking at the most recent flyover pics from RGV Aerial, we can see even more rebar has arrived near the base of the building, so it appears the ground level floor is not fully complete as I hoped, but instead is being poured in several stages which could take about another week or so to complete. So it's going to be a little while longer before the floor of this building is ready to support a fully grown booster. But the countdown clock is definitely ticking. This isn't the only major concrete job in the works, however. Last week, CSI Starbase agent Max Q pointed out this odd looking pipe mounted to the left side of the mega bay door. Some of you may already know what this is right away, but for those who don't, if we follow it to the roof of the building, you can see that this dirty looking pipe represents a major milestone for the wide bay. If you tuned in to the most recent RGV aerial photography live stream, you may have heard me mention this tube which extends to the far corner of the alleged mission control room near the elevator. What you are seeing here were crews laying out rebar meshwork in preparation to pour the concrete. Well, thanks to Lab Padre's Raptor Roost Cam, when I zoomed in on the wide bay on Tuesday, I was able to see what appeared to be a worker using one of these bad boys on freshly poured concrete. On the left side of the image, you can see a few scissor lift work platforms which means that the floor was likely at least one third complete at this time with the middle third in the process of being polished. The very next day, the same procedure was repeated on the right third of the building, which means the entire mission control room floor is probably complete by now. Don't miss the next RGV Aerial live livestream where hopefully we can get a view of what it looks like now. I expect by that time, the entire floor will be poured and crews will be preparing to install the roof shortly thereafter. All right, everybody, with that out of the way, Let's hop back into today's deep dive explanation. Returning to pad 39A, we can see that by March 15th, the concrete floor for the OLIT number two had already been poured. Looking closely, we can see that the concrete actually extended pretty far past the edges of the rebar cages on the left side of the image. In this picture, taken from the ground on March 26th, we can see that framework for the concrete on the first level of the base structure was already in place, and additional rebar sections were still being lifted into the perimeter structure. Traveling back in time one year, we can see that on March 30th, OLIT number one was actually in a similar state with concrete forms for the first level in place and the rebar cages looking mostly complete. Back at KSC, updates from the following week saw the launch tower base looking largely the same in comparison to previous image of it shown from the ground. So not much progress. As I mentioned before, this is where things start to deviate. On April 4th of last year, we can see that by now, both levels of the OLIT base were fully formed out, with one of the doorways even being clearly visible from this angle. Two weeks later, on 420, the base structure concrete was fully cured enough to start lifting the first column of the OLIT into place. When we zoom in on the interior of the base, you can see that several structural steel beams were welded onto the walls using embed plates that were formed into the concrete. By May 5th, a graded walkway was placed on top of the structural beams or a crew access platform for any machinery that might go on that level of the tower. The problem is, no equipment was ever placed on this level. For several weeks, I continued to check to see when the first signs of what would later be Mechazilla's guts would start to appear inside the tower. Oddly enough, about 20 days later, on May 26th, crews had completely removed the graded flooring and replaced it with corrugated metal panels, which as I mentioned earlier, are a sign of incoming concrete. Here it is again from another angle. You can see that by this time, the platform for the drawworks, as well as the drawworks itself, had been assembled and installed on the side of the tower. At the time, I was assuming that maybe they wanted to reinforce the floor in order to support the additional weight of all the mechanical equipment that would later be installed. When we jump ahead another month to July 1st, we can see that the concrete floor had finally been poured nearly three months after the base was completed. Hmm, maybe we aren't so far behind at pad 39A after all. To put this into perspective, this is what the rest of the tower looked like at the time the first level floor was poured. Crazy, right? You can tell there was a lot of design work still happening while the tower was being constructed. The changes didn't end here, however. A few weeks later, on July 13th, I noticed that concrete walls had been added to the platform creating an L-shaped room. Viewing it from this angle, you can more easily see the doorway that leads into this room. Keep in mind here that the top of the wall is roughly one to two feet below the top of the square base structure of the tower. By July 29th, a heavy duty two to three foot thick ceiling had been poured on top of the walls. 
This room is most likely where all the controls and relay systems for Mechazilla are located. So it took nearly four months for OLIT number one to reach a point where the actual base structure of the tower could be considered complete. By the time crews were able to start bringing in all the equipment needed for Mechazilla's inner workings, the eighth section of the tower was already in place, and the ninth was only a few days from arriving. Thanks to this image posted by Boca's brain on Twitter, we can now see the reason it's taking so long to complete the base structure of OLIT number two. The reason is, this time around, they aren't just pouring the outer walls and corners. Instead, they are framing out the entire interior structure as well as the exterior walls the way it should have been done the first time. Another major change is this structural steel decking that the drawwork sits on on OLIT number one has been removed from the design on OLIT number two. Instead, at the base of this tower, you can see several concrete columns already in place. This is what the deck of the drawworks will rest on top of. Not only will this be a concrete deck this time around, but I can tell you right now, the deck on the first launch tower at Starbase doesn't stick out anywhere near as far as this one does. It'll be interesting to see what the additional space is used for. If you look through the opening into the center of the tower, you can see a few concrete columns here as well, which frame out the elevator core of the tower. Unfortunately, we are unable to determine whether or not this exists on the first tower due to the fact that we never got a good look at the ground floor. All right, guys, unfortunately, that's all we have time for today. But don't worry, because as this launch tower continues to progress, we're going to be here to explain all of the major updates and design changes. So make sure you guys subscribe to the channel because you're not going to want to miss out. And before I go, I want to give a special shout out to all the new CSI Starbase Patreon members. Your support goes a long way into helping us put this content out more frequently and also increase the quality. So thanks again, and we hope to see you guys on the next episode. Oh yeah, before I go, I got one more thing to show you guys that you might find interesting. Check out this short clip from an authorized source taken outside of the new orbital launch integration tower while a Falcon 9 was being lifted onto the pad. Notice anything interesting here? If you look closely, you can finally see the beginning of six rebar cages coming out of the ground for the legs of the second Starship orbital launch mount. About time, right?